All righty. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bacar. This is Maury Medea Yahoo bin Yashriel. want to welcome you to a live, another live broadcast of Living Branch. And we pray that your journey and your week has been tobe and that you are endeavoring to keep his commandments and strive to be more like him. So this is definitely um, been a weather wise is the weather's been up and down. So like, OK. So we say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Miss Bacab. We have a uh, wonderful lesson. It's a part two. And we just wanted to make sure to get this lesson out. I received so received so many um, questions, um, different ones asking for advice on Shabbat. And so um, some of them I answered because it was more um, personal stuff. Some were more general, so I let you know I'll be addressing those in today's lesson. Now, whether there's going to be a part three, I don't know yet. Uh, it just depends on how many more questions I get during the week. But we're thankful that it is Shabbat. We celebrate Shabbat. We just give him all praise, honor, and esteem. I mean... It's his day. It's the day he set aside. So our objective is to be pleasing on this day. And so we're going to walk through some things. And hopefully it'll bring some understanding for us all that we can just be obedient. We will, And obedient and still have enjoyment. In his Shabbat. All right, Miss Baka, I want you to get your hearts and minds in a place of learning, being able to hear his voice, what he's speaking to you as we pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malak Halam. Father, we say Todah Rabbah for all of your benefits towards us. We count it joy, Father, that we even came across this truth. Now, Father, we ask you to make us good stewards of this truth. That, Father, we will be stewards that are worthy of the higher. That we'll be obedient servants, humble. And we cannot do it without you. We ask you to guide us. Um, to show us, to reprove us, everything that's necessary so that we'll be able to make it into the kingdom. Father, Toda Rabbah for all my Miss Baka out there, both far and near. I ask you to give them an understanding heart, understanding mind. Keep them. Keep them steadfast in your word. We say Toda Rabbah. In the name of Mashiach Yahusha, the mediator of this covenant, Halel to Yahuwah, Amin. All right, let me just say this as a disclaimer. I specifically entitled this lesson Shabbat Guidance, and this is the second part. And the reason we use guidance, some things we know for sure that you're not supposed to do. Some things can be questionable. So this is simply to help guide you through uh, what you're supposed to do and not be doing. And then to help you in the areas that might um, seem like they're in the gray area. All right. So let's get this started. It's going to be a uh, fantastic learning for us so I received this more more than one occasion must I stay in my house okay so 
what I want to do is walk you through some scriptures and show you some things that um, puts us back doing their time frame. And then we can base what we do on what they did from their understanding and not from our modern day understanding. So it says in Leviticus 23, 3, six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest, a set apart convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. Okay, so let's look at this word dwelling, which is Moshev or Mosheb. And you can see here by implication in your population. And it comes from a root word to sit down. Your shop to dwell to remain so sometimes we take this to be in all your dwellings you know some interpret it as house but let's continue to look this word is also in tech in, in um, interpreted in many other places here is in Genesis 36 43 is habitation it says the Duke Madiel, Duke Aram, these be the Dukes of Edom, according to their habitation in the land of their possession. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. So it's talking about their whole land. This is their habitation, their dwelling. Exodus 10 verse 23 they saw not one another, neither rose from their, from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel, or Israel, or Yashrael, had light in their dwelling. So where were they dwelling? They were dwelling in Gosha. So it was speaking of all of Gosha. Okay, Leviticus 3.17. It shall be a perpetual statue. For your generations throughout all your dwelling that you may eat neither fat nor blood so it's talking about dwelling talking about all that's proclaimed as israel uh, leviticus 26 verse 35 as long as it lies desolate what is it talking about israel it shall rest because it did not rest on in your Shabbats when you dwelt upon it. Okay. Numbers 15, 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Say unto them, When you be come into the land of your habitation. What is the land of your habitation? Israel, which I give unto you. So this is talking about all of Israel for that particular scripture that we talked about. Uh, it is the Shabbat of you who in all your dwellings. Okay. Now, I'm bringing this point in because this really kind of helps us to see that there were things that went on on Shabbat. Okay. Uh, Numbers 28 verse 11. I mean, verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifice is made by fire, for a sweet savor unto me shall be observed to offer unto me in their due season. Okay, the word there is moed, or fixed times or season. Now, if you remember, and if you haven't watched last week's lesson, I encourage you to go back because when you start reading um, about the Moeds, the fixed seasons, Shabbat was one of them. So they gave sacrifices on Shabbat. Not everyone lived 
in the Jerusalem area. So for them to make the sacrifice on the Shabbat, they would have to leave their houses to be at the temple. Okay, Numbers 28, verse 9. And on the Shabbat day, two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of flour for uh, a meal offering, they translated meat offering, mingled with oil and a drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Shabbat, besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So we have to put this in context you know um so you know some ask you know can i go out to fellowship i'm i'm bound to my house i have to stay in my house well we see they went to the temple to do sacrifices on the shabbat okay let's look at this because this is one of the scriptures that was in question uh, Exodus 16, verse 29. See, for that Yahuwah has given you the Shabbat. Therefore, if he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days, abide you every man in his place, and let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So, the, the word here is makam. Makam. And we have to look at some places. But just by the definition of how it's used, it's used widely as a locality. Okay, and I'll give you some scripture for that. Okay, um, Genesis 21 31. Wherefore he called the place Bereshiba, this Makam, Makom is a, a locality of Beersheba because there they swore both of them. So it's talking about a big locality, not just your house. So when it talks about going out of your place, it's talking about your locality. Now, of course, if you're going to the temple to do sacrifices because that's where he put his name, um, you know, we're still talking about Israel as a whole. So let's go to Deuteronomy 31 verse 11. When all Israel has come to appear before Yahuwah, the Elohim, in the place, Makom, which he shall choose, thou shall read this law before all of Israel in their hearing. Okay, so what was the place? What was the place of his choosing? It was Jerusalem. So this word place is not talking about your home. It's talking about a locality. Okay, and just want to make sure. So can you leave? Now, you shouldn't be leaving your house to go to work to uh, go shopping, uh, to do the things of your pleasure. But if you're doing, if you're leaving your home to go fellowship with someone, maybe to go witness, um, those, you know, things are fine. Pertaining to him, not your pleasure, but him. Okay, let's keep going. So I just wanted to throw in this um, uh, example too. We had someone email me um, about some things, you know, they wanted to do and they weren't sure. And then at, they went back and they read this particular passage and it was like, okay, I, can't, I won't do that because it seems similar to picking up sticks. Now, at this point, okay, he had given a commandment, but there hadn't, there wasn't a penalty if you broke that commandment about keeping the Shabbat. 
because you would hope that there would be no one that would uh, violate the Shabbat. But of course, there's always one. There's always two. There's always three. It got so bad that they eventually, in the prophets, profaned his Shabbat. Okay, so let's read Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks. Keyword gathered upon the Shabbat day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moshe and Aharon or Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward or prison because it was not declared what should be done to him. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, the man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. That's verse 36 right here. Okay, verse 36. Now, I want you to notice that this comes right after 36. Okay, because we're talking and keep in mind. This is going to be reflected in Isaiah when we get there. This very concept of what Shabbat, Shabbat is supposed to be about. So it, it's a continuation. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the border a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and do them. So the purpose here. So they weren't wearing fringes in the garden. But now. He's commanding them to put fringes on their garments and put a border of blue so that they can do what? Remember to keep his commandments. Here's the key. Okay, and this part, just my opinion, I think is connected to the Shabbat part. That you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. After which you used to go a whoring. So seeking your own heart and highs can get you in trouble. And especially on Shabbat. Because it's supposed to be his day, not your day. That you may remember and do all my commandments to be set apart unto Elohim or Elohim. I am Yahuwah your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Mitraim and Egypt to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, so we'll go more over this part shortly. But I, I think it's um, very interesting that this comes right after the man is found picking up sticks on the Shabbat. He's found gathering sticks, which is considered work. Now, this bring us, I want to come back to the cooking part. Um, like I emphasized last week, I can find where it talks about gathering, working, but I cannot um, find where anybody was punished for cooking or heating up their food. So, what I did here, I just put this up here, um, just just so you can just see the, this is the um, transliteration. Okay, Vayomer, and he said, who said, Elohim, 
who, this, a share, what, Deborah, Yahuwah, so Yahuwah said or spake, Sabaton, which is a, is a rest period. This is the transliteration down here. Shabbat Kaddish, uh, Shabbat of being set apart to Yahuwah. Then it says, Machar et, tomorrow, and it gives you a direct object. Uh, a share, okay, a share, to fu. Okay, and that's what bake. A fu, bake. Va, which is an, and another direct object. A share tabasha lu. Okay, what boil basha she lu boil vaet another and direct object coal hayo def which is all the surplus and all the surplus. Um, Hani Hu, which is leave. Le, a Tim for you. La Mitz Merat. Which is for keeping, and then Ad Ha Broker, which is until the morning. So, the instruction here, from what I'm seeing, is just telling them uh, it, it seems that what you get on the sixth day, you make it up, you cook it, and you save any surplus for tomorrow. He's going to make sure that it doesn't rot. He doesn't say there's no absolute um, saying do not cook. So I don't want to add to or subtract from. So for me to say where I don't see any, I don't see any uh, strict low here telling me don't do something because that's usually when he doesn't want you to do something you'll find low in in the passage but I don't see that here um, so that's why for for me I'm like okay you know we, we, we have to eat it's a celebration you see him offering giving offerings on the on the Shabbat and some of the offerings, the priests had to sit down in the holy, in the, um, some would say holy or Kadesh place and, or set apart place. And the priests would have to partake and eat. Uh, and when those were burned on the altar, that, that's, they're cooking it basically because they're not eating raw meat. So, you know, this is, I, I just wanted you to see this for yourself. So, if if you still you know a little then cook all your food on on the prep day then on Shabbat you can just heat it up you know but I, I can't say I see something that says um, don't boil or don't cook so but we'll leave that one alone okay now I thought this was wonderful in the Psalms, we actually have a psalm of Shabbat, a psalm or a song for the Shabbat day. Isn't that something? I think that's wonderful. And so I wanted to, I put this in here because I thought it might be of help to some of us. And definitely would um, 
show us some things. So when you look here, it says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto Yahuwah. So Shabbat, now remember this is a song of Shabbat. So giving thanks unto Yahuwah is a good thing. Your Shabbat should be filled with thanksgiving. Should be filled. And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. So it should be filled with singing praises to his name. O magnify Yahuwah, for he is worthy to be praised. Don't get so sedity, I would say, that you can't give him thanks. You can't give him praise. You, now, you don't have to get all crazy, go somersaulting all over your house. But what he's looking for is a praise from your lips that's connected to your heart. Because some people honor him with their lips, but their heart is afar off. But this praise and this thanksgiving that you give him, they need to be connected. And... and when there's a disconnect, a shortage, he knows it. But uh, he's worthy to be praised for sure. To show forth your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every evening. Upon an instrument of ten strings. So, this is a Shabbat song. Some people don't like music on Shabbat. But, hey, clearly, it's saying here, this is a... A psalm of Shabbat. And upon the psaltery. Upon the heart for a solemn sound. For you, Yahuwah, have made me glad through thy works. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. So notice, he's not triumphing in his works. But he's triumphing, triumphing in the works of Yahuwah's hands. O oh, Yahuwah, how great are thy works. And thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not. Neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as grass, and when the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Yahuwah, art most high forevermore. For lo, thy enemy, O Yahuwah, Thy enemy shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thy exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desire, see my desire on my enemy, and on excuse me, and my ears shall hear my desire on the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a seed of Lebanon. These that be planted in the house of Yahuwah shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim. They shall bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing to show that Yahuwah is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him wonderful song shows you because sometimes you get discouraged you think i'm keeping shabbat i'm keeping his commandments look at the rich look at the wicked they're flourishing in their ways but if you stick with his cycle the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous he's gonna bring Everything that he's spoken to pass. So you be encouraged. You keep Shabbat and honor his day. Okay. Now. Let's talk about carrying burdens. <laughs> and, and I want to open up your scope. On carrying burdens. 
Okay, in Nehemiah 13, verse 15, in those days saw I in Yehuda some treading wine presses on the Shabbat, bringing in sheaves, they were in the field cutting, lading donkeys, as also wine grapes and figs and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem or Jerusalem on the Shabbat day. And I testified against them in that day wherein they sold food or victuals. Okay? So, yes, burdens, you know, carrying. Uh, I've, I've seen this taken to the extreme. Where in some areas... Uh, they wouldn't even put a key in their pocket, pocket so they wouldn't carry a burden on Shabbat. Okay? But I want to take this um, to another area that might not have been discussed before or You've heard it, but you didn't quite. Okay. Mas masa also means utterance. Okay. And notice here, especially sing, mental, or desire. So let me give you some places. Um, well, we'll read one more verse. And then I'll show you some places where it has to do with utterance. Nehemiah uh, 13 verse 19. It came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem or Jerusalem began to be dark before the Shabbat, I commanded that the gate should be shut and charged that they should not open until after Shabbat. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should be no burdens be brought in brought in on the Shabbat and of course here he's talking about people bringing in merchandise and all this to sell okay but look at um, Proverbs 30 verse 1 and the words of Agar the son of Yaka even the prophecy okay that word their prophecy is Messiah the man spake unto Ithuel, even unto Ithuel, and you call. Okay, um, verse, chapter 31, verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Okay, the utterances. So this word burden can have some utterances. So let's look at Jeremiah 17 verse 21. Thus saith Yahuwah, take heed to yourself and bear no burden on the Shabbat, neither bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem or Jerusalem, neither carry forth a burden out of your house on the Shabbat, neither do uh, ye any work, but hollow you the Shabbat day as I commanded your fathers. So you can you can carry. There's a physical load that you can carry, but there's also a mental load that you can carry in utterances. OK, those shouldn't come. Out of your house on the Shabbat, neither should they be. Uh. When you go places, if you go into fellowship, you know, sometimes um, people get get around fellowshipping and, and fellowshipping becomes a gospel fest, a gossip fest where, where they're just uttering everything they're talking about has nothing to do with Shabbat. So this is what we're up against. You'd be surprised. So I mentioned Biden all, you know, all I want to talk about is the sweet 16. 
what my team was, what my team did. On Shabbat? No. That has nothing to do with you. And even talking bad about people on Shabbat, I don't even care if it's true. Reserve that. Don't You shouldn't be doing it anyway unless you can you know, talk to them. But his day is reserved for utterances about him. What did it say in the song? About praise, about worship, about doing things that pertain to him. This is what we should be focusing on. Okay, let's keep going. Jeremiah 17, 24. It shall come to pass. If you diligently hearken unto me, say if you were to bring in no burdens through the gate of this city on the Shabbat day, but hollow the Shabbat to do no work therein. Okay, no burdens. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, 27. But if you would not hearken unto me to hollow the Shabbat, to uh, not to bear burden, even entering in at the gate of Jerusalem on the Shabbat day, that I will kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and shall not be quenched. So, if you want to carry the burdens, he can kindle the fire, and look what he did. Look at Jerusalem now. It's been devoured. He doesn't play. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what the purpose of Shabbat is. Okay, and I, and I hope this is helping you. Let's look at Isaiah 58, verse 13. If thou turn away thy feet from the Shabbat, from doing thy pleasure, Okay, what is, what is your pleasure? I color-coded these to make them a little bit easier. Okay, desire, valuable thing. What's valuable to you? Uh, a matter, something in mind. You know, your pleasure. Okay, um, has, Shabbat, it's not about your pleasure. On my set apart day and call the Shabbat a delight. What's a delight? Pleasant. Um, something dainty. The set apart of Yahuwah, honorable. Okay, and we'll look at honorable when we go to the other page. And shall honor him not doing thy own ways nor finding thy own pleasure nor speaking thy own words did, did you hear that so Shabbat is geared towards him then shall thou delight thyself in Yahuwah and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy father. For the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken it. So let's keep looking. So color coded was honorable. What is honorable? Uh... Kabod to be heavy. But for us, in a good sense, it's numerous, rich, honorable. It weighs heavy on you. So, what is the purpose of Shabbat? Not doing thy own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. The bottom line, the Shabbat is not about you, your ways, pleasures, or words. It is, a, it is about Ab Yahuwah Elohim. That's what it's about. Let's go back here and look again. 
See, not doing bring up my pimps. Okay, look right here. Not doing your own ways. Or finding your own pleasures. No speaking thy own words. So things that you enjoy, if 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 they don't bring esteem to Yahuwah, you should be doing those on the six days. He gave you six days to do what you enjoy. He gave you six days to work. The seventh day is his day. What what does he want? What is he looking for? We're going to, and we're going to see this more as we go along uh, and give some examples. But keep this in mind. Not doing your own ways. Not finding your own pleasure. Not speaking your own words. Okay? So, let's go to Shabbat first century. Let's look at some of the Brit Hadashah, or was commonly called the New Testament, and just look at some of the things they did on Shabbat. Okay, Matthew 12, verse 1. At that time, Yahusha went on the Shabbat through the corn, and his disciples were as hungered, and began to pluck the years of corn to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Shabbat. Now, were they working? That's the question. No, they weren't working. They, they were simply eating. Okay. To gather, let me give you the concept. Okay. Even the, the, the um, commandments tell us that the corners, they weren't supposed to harvest. They were supposed to leave that for the strangers and for the widows and various ones. But they were not permitted to take baskets and gather that. Okay, that's where the gathering comes when they took the baskets. But if but if they were to just take it and eat it, that's not considered gathering. Because you're gathering, you're storing up, you're taking back. So they just ate it on the spot. So you have to understand these concepts. Uh, Matthew 12, verse 10. And behold, there was a man which had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, is it lawful? Okay, now I want you to get the mindset. To heal on the Shabbat day. That they might accuse him. They actually had a rule that said it was not. You couldn't do it. And he said unto them. What man shall there be among you. That shall have one sheep. And if it fall into the pit on the Shabbat day. Will he not lay hold on it and lift it up? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do well on the Shabbat day. So, we, we're going to find more of this. But they actually had a, um, a rule saying, uh-uh, you can't heal on the Shabbat. They considered healing work. So we have to be able to distinguish what's work, what's not. <laughs> Mark chapter 1 verse 21. And they went into Capernaum. And straightway on the Shabbat day he entered into the synagogue and taught. So he was in Capernaum. And what did he do? Went to the synagogue where they assembled. And he taught. Hmm, interesting. Came okay, Mark 3 verse 4. And he said unto them. Is it lawful to do good on the Shabbat. Or to do evil. To save a life or to kill. 
but they held their peace. So some of this we really need to pay attention to. Mark 6 verse 2. And when the Shabbat day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? What wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Okay, I, I really like the, the next one. Um, Luke 13 verse 14. Uh, chapter 4. 13 verse 14 and the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because Yahusha had healed on the Shabbat day and said unto the people there are six days in which man ought to work and in them therefore came and uh, and be healed and not on the Shabbat day See, so they were saying you got six days you can come to be healed but don't do it on the Shabbat name. And the sovereign then answered him and said, Thy hypocrite. Okay, so now he's getting ready to expose something that they were doing. Doth not one, uh, not each one of you on the Shabbat day loose his oxen or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering? Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from this bond on the Shabbat day? So he's, he was telling them, look, you take your donkey and your ox down to the watering hole on the Shabbat day. You loose them from the stall. But you don't want me to loose this woman who's been bound by Hasatan, the adversary, for her bonds. You're a hypocrite. That's what you are. So I put this again because I wanted to highlight that part. The hypocrite. Doth not each one of you on the Shabbat loose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to water it? Ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from this bond on the Shabbat day? And when he has said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. They should be ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the esteemed things that were done by him. Perspective. Okay, Luke 14, verse 1. And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Shabbat day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a man before him which had uh, which had the dowsy and Yahusha answering spake unto the lawyers and the Pharisees saying is it lawful to heal on the Shabbat day and they held his peace and he took him and healed him and let him go and answered them saying which of you shall have a donkey or an ox fall into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Shabbat day. And they could not answer him again to these things. Wisdom. Father, give us wisdom to, to use your Shabbat day for your purpose. Luke 23 verse 56. And they returned and prepared spices and ornaments and rested the Shabbat day according to the commandment. John 5 9. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Shabbat. And the Yahudim therefore said unto him, that was cured. It is the Shabbat day. It is not lawful 
for thy to carry thy bed. Man, they had all kind of stuff. Okay, uh, John 7, verse 22. Moshe therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And you on the Shabbat day do circumcise a man. If a man on the Shabbat day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses shall not be broken, are you angry at me because I have made a man uh, every whit hold on the Shabbat day? Interesting. So, it, very good points. The purpose of Shabbat day. John 6, verse 9, verse 16. Therefore, said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of Allahim, because he keep not the Shabbat day. Others say, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? There was a division among the people. Okay, let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 27. For they that dwell at Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Shabbat. Clue, they, they read scriptures on the Shabbat. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. Okay, Acts 13, verse 42. And when the Yahudi were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought. Uh, that these words might be preached to them the next Shabbat. Now, these Gentiles, or this translation, uh, are not Gentiles as we think. Um, they were from the ten tribes. They regarded the people that were from the ten tribes that were still in the, some were still in the region as Gentiles. Okay, uh, Acts 13, verse 44. The next Shabbat came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Elohim. So hearing the word of Elohim on Shabbat, very important. Acts 16, verse 13. On the Shabbat, he went out of the city by the river side where prayer was wont to be made. And he sat down and spake unto a woman which resorted thither. Okay, you see prayer on the Shabbat. Acts 17, verse 2. And Shaul, as his manner was, went in, t uh, went in unto them, and three Shabbat days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Okay, so this brings us to you. Your Shabbat. What do I do? Okay. What do you do on the Shabbat? What can you do on the Shabbat? Okay. We, we sing it. Uh, you can give thanks. Um, we saw that in our reading. Give thanks. What else can we do? We can sing praises. We can sing. We can read scriptures. Okay, and, and I specifically said scriptures. Not only can we read, we can study. What else can we do on Shabbat? We can fellowship. 
Remember, Shabbat is a day of celebrating Yahuwah's creation. Fellowship. Oh, what a fellowship. Okay, uh, I see uh, Gadar Yahoo said we can pray. Definitely need to pray. Prayer is definitely one of the things that's forgotten. Definitely need to pray. Okay, what else can we do on Shabbat? So many things we can do. So many things we can do. Give thanks, sing, read, study, fellowship, pray. Witness. I've done that on Shabbat. Went out and witness. Uh, hand out bookmarkers. And, you know, it's, there, there should be, um, there should be a, just a real, when Shabbat gets here, I, I know we love, but we, there should be a, a there should be some some real extreme love on the Shabbat. Just because of the day. Okay. Uh, I see somebody write poetry. Of course, poetry that's going, you know, pertain to the Father. Yes, for sure. Just like the Psalm of, uh, of Shabbat. So, right poetry um heal yes heal on the shabbat So it's, I mean, it's, it's many things that you can do um, on the Shabbat. And, and, and one thing, and he, here's, here's a, here's a, um, something uh, that Shelly for Yah uh, I, I think is crucial because I, I and, and it involves the burdens the no burdens on Shabbat and the reason I put this is because of forgiveness you shouldn't be carrying anything that's in your power to forgive over on over into Shabbat. That all all that stuff should be resolved. Should be resolved before Shabbat. Just so you don't have any burdens. Because now you might not be loading up an animal, but you're burdened down. Okay? You are not operating. So forgiveness is key. Okay, you can feed the hungry or the homeless. So, I mean, so many things that we can do on the Shabbat.
that had a purpose driven uh, for him. Just remember, it's not about your own pleasures. It's not about you and what you want to do. It's not about your words. So you should have, you should really have kind words. It goes back to that love on the Shabbat. Okay. Shabbat is not so much um, about making a set of rules. I mean, you can make, if people wanted to, you can make Shabbat just so grievous there would be no enjoyment in it. I could come up, come up with a rule, okay, you can't go to the bathroom on Shabbat. So if I can't go to the bathroom, I can't can't really eat. <laughs> or uh, oh, you you can't pick your baby up on the Shabbat. Your baby's crying. No, you can't pick him up. That's carrying a burden. Oh, can't feed your baby on the Shabbat. I mean, you people can get ridiculous with rules. But if we focus on what we can do, what he wants us to do, what his desire is, as far as making the Shabbat a delight, not for our own pleasures. So, and some even with their children, you know, uh, they do Bible games and Bible word finds, uh, things to get them acquainted with their scripture, read them Bible stories. So all kinds of things. Don't get sidetracked. It's very easy to get sidetracked. You know, um, remember this, this is going to be his day. And when the kingdom comes, the Shabbat is still going to be in, in effect because they're going to be bringing stuff on the Shabbat. So we got to make sure uh, that we keep Shabbat honorable, that we don't pollute it. Now, one last thing. Uh, that I'm gonna mention, and because nobody, um, eh, let's go back a couple of um, here. I'm I'm just gonna gleam it. I didn't I didn't have this opinion when I first started the walk, but as I grew and began to see, um, you know, it's been it's been years now, I've been well over. 10 years you begin to understand okay but when it talks about doing your pleasure okay um, and stuff some some people uh, some some religious um, that observe Shabbat think hey they endorse it they say that having sex on Shabbat is okay so some things we grow into and when i look at this doing your own pleasure that's a pleasure that i have six days to do during the week so on his day i want to make sure that i'm pristine that i am um, presentable to him so I want to make sure that I'm not doing my own pleasures. And that's a part of it. So yeah, I just thought I'd briefly mention it. It might not be for 
it might everybody might not have that understanding now but as you grow and his shabbat becomes a delight you desire to do less of your things and more of his things So, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a part three. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you some guidance and help you to navigate, to make Shabbat a celebration, a delight. It, it really is supposed to be, you know. It's a time of rejoicing. So, what I want to um, do is make sure that we all good. Make sure we all good. Now, I'm, I'm just reading all the uh, the comments. To make sure I didn't miss anything. Did I put worship on there? I might have missed worship. Definitely a time of worship. It's always good on Shabbat. And I think I ha I do have some, I'll have to go back and look. I do have some Pasak uh, studies uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'll have to look to make sure. Uh, I've, I've done a few of those. So we shall see. Um, Alrighty, Ms. Bukai, it has been a pleasure being with you today. And if I could have you do one thing, let's do this today. Let's make his Shabbat a delight. Let's really enjoy the Shabbat like no other. Make this the best Shabbat ever because it's wonderful. Hallelujah. Just just felt a, a real good Ruach move because we are making this a delight. All righty. Hallelujah. So, but if still, if you have any more questions, you can still send me your questions to info at living branch.org. And I will do my best to get with them. So let's pray, Miss Bakar. Father, I say total rebar for all of my Miss Bakar. Thank you for their diligence. Thank you for them being on this lesson thank you for all of those that will listen to this lesson later on i pray father this lesson would be help and guidance father our endeavor is just to bring shabbat back to your purpose father we know that man is added to and subtracted from we're trying our best father to navigate to get back to how you intended things to be restore unto us the joy of our salvation father show us guide us lead us so that we can be pleasing in your sight, Father. Father, and we say, Toda Rabbah, for the mediator of this covenant, Yahushua HaMashiach. We ask you, Father, to keep us steadfast in your word. In the name of Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All righty. Hallelujah. Like I said, you know, you can hit me up. Uh, info at living-branch.org 
I'm the only one to get those emails. So if you have questions or comments or uh, any anything you like to share, feel free. Feel free. And to die for all of our family, our Miss Baka, um, in the U.S., in Australia, in Africa, in the Middle East, uh, in the islands, um, all that listen to us. We appreciate you, say, and we just bid you a heart and Shabbat Shalom. Okay, Ms. Bukai, uh, just this is the Resource Center. If you would like to, you know, know where you, good books to buy and have to read resources, this is the place to go. And you, you do get Amazon prices, just so you know. Hey, I want to say again, appreciate all those that went to Amazon and gave us some good reviews because we did have some haters out there that don't want to put in the work when it comes to teaching their children. They expect the book to do everything when it's not the book. It's you interacting with your children. That's what it's all about. So the paper edition and the Kindle version is still available for the Hebrew Ten of Commandments and also the paper edition Passover. I've been seeing this for so long. It's right around the corner. <laughs> it's right here on us. So if you don't have these tools already, get these tools and use them to teach and train your children. Okay, uh, all, all of our bookmarker requests have been sent out. So if you had bookmarker requests, we sent those out. Um, I had the, I think the last one I had to send out was to the Nether Netherlands, so those are on the way. And if you have bookmarkers or you need some more bookmarkers, just let me know. Just go to www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org. Okay, and if you would like to uh, help us in what we do, you can send your donations to our mailing address, our PayPal, or our online giving tool, which brings you here. So, most of all, we want your support and prayer. Uh, if you can, if you can help us, that's that's well and good. But um, we're not money driven, so but we're purpose and prayer driven. So, Miss Baka, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, let's make this Shabbat a definite delight unto Yahuwah Elohim and do the things that please Him. And we will be fellowshipping in Mori Lamai Yahoo at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you tune in for that wonderful lesson. And 